In this tutorial, we are going to see how we can analyze survey data or liquor scale survey data using what we call confirmatory factor analysis uh, through JASP, which is an open source and free software. So we have the data here and we have different liquor scale items coded from one to seven and we want to, uh, we already uh, run exploratory factor analysis. Now we try to run confirmatory factor analysis so as to uh, confirm the factor loadings. So here I will just go to the analyze and then I will go to factor and then I will go to confirmatory factor analysis. And here I will have the first factor that I will call EL. So this is EL and then I will just start loading the variables. I will need to, to navigate back to the, the study to see the, exactly how the order is done. So we have PE first as the first factor so that's what i'm going to do so pe variables pe1 to pe5 and then i will put them here and i will call this pe and then i will click add and then i will put the second factor this is according to the results of the uh exploratory factor analysis so the second factor we have intention one to four so regardless of this order i will just use intention or let's use intention so what i will do is go here back and i will call this intent and then i will put intention one to intention four then i will click plus then i will see the third factor which is in our case al so one to five so I will go back to the analysis, then EL, this is the acronym that is used here. So EL125 and move here. The last one is AIA. And here we did some modifications according to the results of exploratory factor analysis. We only kept uh, one, two, and four. That's it. So I will include uh, one, two, and four. These are the items left. That's it. So now we interpret the results. So here in the model options, of course, I can include mean structure, residual covariance, model identification factor variance, marker variable, effects coding, assumes factors are incorrelated. And then we can do also multi-group structure equation or rather confirmatory factor analysis group in variable. We can choose it here in variance. We can choose whether it is configurable, metric, scalar, strict, structural. In case we have, we are doing multi-group uh, structure equation modeling or confirmatory factor analysis by grouping them like into two samples, etc., like pre, post sample, etc. Then we have additional fit measures. We have Kaiser Mayer. Orkin test, we can also have Bartlett's test of sphericity again, the R squared that is the predicted variance in the X variables, the average variance extracted for the um, convergent validity, the heterotrait monotrait ratio for the convergent validity as well, and the reliability. This is mostly for uh, discriminant, so we have discriminant convergent validity, which TMT is a new indicator. Then we can also include implied covariance, residual covariance, modification indices. And here we could put a cutoff and show Levin syntax. So these are the modification indices with, with, with the cutoff value. So here I could include a model plot, show parameter estimates, show variance, rotate plot. Or for the, very, for the advanced, I have mimic packages like Levin, Implus, EQS, and then the confidence intervals are set uh, by default at 95%. And the standard error is standard, not robust, not bootstrap. We can do bootstrap at 5,000 here. We can adjust this in case we want to run structural equation modeling. And he here is a way to deal with missing data because missing data is not tolerated in factor analysis. So make sure that there's no missing data or you could do this wise, pairwise comparison, robust two stage, two stage, etc. The estimator, like here, it's chosen by default in automatic mode, like we have email, GLS, WLS, ULS, DWLS, and the standardization like non-latent or no exogenous covariates. 
So these are like all the options that are available by the software. We can also go further to second order factor analysis where we put the latent factor here and we put them as second order. So this is exactly what we have. So let's see the output. So this is the model fit in this. We have baseline model and factor model and we have the chi-square and the significance level of the chi-square. The estimator is, is ML. The additional fit measures, we have fit indices, comparative fit indices, CFI, Tucker-Lewis index, TLI, uh, Bentler bonnet non-normed fit index, NNFI, and this is the value, the parsimony normed fit index, PNFI, Bolland's relative fit index, R, uh, R E or uh, F I, etc. Incremental fit index and relative non -centrali centrality index. So I have a table with these thresholds or cutoff values here. I could share it with you. Like chi squared should be below point level of acceptance should be below 0 0.5 or 5.0 according to this reference. So the comparative fit index should be this one 0 0.9 above point zero point nine and the root mean residual uh, should be uh, below zero point zero eight goodness of fit index above zero point nine adjusted goodness of fit uh, this value eight five or point eight five root mean square error of approximation uh, below zero point zero eight so there are like some goodness of fit measures and badness of fit measures like the ones that are higher goodness of fit the lower the badness of fit the standardized root mean square or mean square residual SRMR, which should be less than 0.08. So these are like the thresholds that should be here. You could use this table in addition to the values that you can uh, you got already, and you can report the goodness of fit measures for confirmatory factor analysis because these are the ones that are the most important to see to what extent the hypothesized model fits the observed and collected data for empirical verification. So this is in brief how we can run a confirmatory factor analysis and interpret the result using a free open source software, which is just, of course, if you have questions or remarks, do not hesitate to post them below. See you soon. Bye for now.